are alive, ladies and gentlemen. But you've never heard this one. Boom, we are alive, ladies and gentlemen. I thought what would be fun today is it's been about a year since we did our The Road Ahead video. Last time we touched base was in the heat of the bull market in 2021. And it was a recognizable shift for me and a favorable moment as well because it, it marked the kind of transition into focused venture capital. And from that point on, I guess kind of web three play to earn, play to own games. Throughout my years of research, I've started to focus on things that are less contentious. There are a bunch of very highly valuable conversations that are also very contentious. I don't know why this is, but people are always like, oh, you shouldn't talk about politics at the dinner table. It's almost as if the conversations that are most important are reserved for when we should be having them with people at a dinner table, but we don't have that anymore. So I guess the, the point of that is the video games really held a space where if we we're, were talking about money and politics or governance, I guess is another way to say it, for quite a long time. And video games seems to be this kind of Trojan horse that may allow like the mycelium of this technology to take over without a whole lot of people noticing. So part of me expects a bunch of tumultuous changes in the market. All around the globe, you've got people rioting and standing up for different rights and the rising costs of living. And I commend these people. But importantly, I want to know what's going to be on the other side. And it's one of those weird things. Games have been there for a really long time. I don't know if you guys saw this the other day, but on Twitter I posted a video of some kids playing a video game. They're like waist high in water. It was flooding, I guess, and they just moved their computer up and they kept playing games. People love playing video games. And one of the ideas that really kind of caught me in this at the beginning of the pandemic was when people started to earn more money playing Axie Infinity than they would at a standard wage. We had the CEO of Splinterlands on. We actually have had some of the top Web3 video game CEOs on for podcasts. And through that, what I like to find are these defining crisis moment investments. I'm a young lad, I don't know everything about the world, but one of the things I have learned is that when things start to go wrong, look for what does well and try to invest there. So we found something that does well in the heat of a crisis and there are more venture capitalists chalked to the brim with capital waiting to invest in this new booming sector. Now, for those of you that don't know venture capital, for the most part, if they are a real venture vehicle, and by that I mean they are follow specific venture capital mandates with their LPs, etc., they have to spend all that capital in, an, in investments within a set time frame, usually between somewhere between five and 10 years. I'm doing a lot of hand talking. Please insert accordion here. So because of this, the next two years, there is gonna be a ton of capital that starts to flow into this particular sector. So if you're an indie video game developer or, or any, any type of relationship with technology, there's gonna be so much money pouring into these industries. If you're out there looking for a job, trying to figure out your hustle and interested in things that you think might accelerate your life, Video games developing is probably one of them. Now, I don't want to start making video games. It's not why I'm here. I'm not going to do that. My interest here is how we get as much of this technology that I've been such a big fan of into the hands of as many people as possible. And video games looks like that's probably the route. So through some abstract road, that's where we've ended up today. The growth and the potential behind ideas like NFTs as identity. So I just wanted to, uh, first off, take a look at what we've done over the last year, kind of where the focus has been. Again, just take another moment out for a thank all of you to the Bear family. Um, trying to do these videos is hard. I, 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 did you guys like it today with a little bit of cut ups? And I'm gonna try to write down the video storylines now and maybe try to cut it up throughout the day. So it, 
because they tell me if the CTR and the watch time goes up, apparently, I don't know, I don't know. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to figure out this YouTube video thing. I really like making these. I've liked it since the beginning, whether it was around pineapple, the first few videos, like this, whether it was around, whether it was around giant pineapples or Bitcoin, I've always had such fun out here with you, the Arcane Bear family. Oh, by the way, we're gonna be doing a retreat. So, oh, well, that's getting dark. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen, it's getting dark. Let's, we're going to be doing a retreat. So if you're in the private bear family and you wanna join, there's limited tickets. There's only 25 tickets, basically. Uh, so it's gonna sell out quite quickly. If, if you're in the private bear family, um, you will get that email in your inbox this week. If you're not in the private bear family and you wanna join, well, hopefully there will be tickets left when it goes public, but that might not be the case. Um, so sign up for the private group if you want to. If not, uh, uh, we're, we're, we're stoked. We do have a free newsletter, so sign up to the free newsletter, actually as well, shout out to, the, to Paul for helping make sure we have a free content newsletter that goes out. And um, I appreciate you, that's it. Watch some more of my other videos. Just let it, just let it play. Like walk away. Just let YouTube play only Arcane Bear videos for a while so it can kick us up further in the algorithm. I'd really appreciate that. <laughs>